Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to do a crafting tutorial of a stone bridge. So I've kind of been talking about it in previous episodes about uh, doing a stone bridge and kind of a, a generic kind of terrain similar to this Tudor style house back here um, that you could use pretty well on any tabletop game you're wanting to play. You could use it on Blood and Valor, Blood and Plunder, you could use it in Warhammer, you could use it in all sorts of different things. And that's kind of, uh, you know, some of these basic uh, terrain pieces um, I think are kind of uh, really good projects to do because you can use it for multiple different games. I really get a lot of use out of that piece of terrain. So let's take a look at it. This is the finished product. This is what we're going to build in today's episode. So this is uh, the finished uh, product. Really happy how this turned out. Let's take a look around on it. You can see that uh, we got a texturalized roadway there. And that's kind of what we're gonna we're gonna be building in this video. So I made it elongated uh, for a few different reasons. One, this is a, a rounded bridge. I want to play. I play mostly on a flat surface tabletop game. Um, maybe down the road I'll look at building a larger uh, terrain piece, more of a diorama where I have multiple levels, and maybe a straight bridge would make more sense on that. Um, but most of my games are done on a flat surface, so I needed to do more of a round bridge like this. So this kind of uh, covers a lot of different uh, different types of games. Uh, and the other reason why I elongated it is so your miniatures don't slide down. So on, the problem with doing a round bridge on a flat surface uh, is that it's too steep of a decline or incline, and your, your, your miniatures will just tumble off. So having it elongated like this really helps your miniatures um, stay actually on on the bridge and not fall down going down going up uh, and then you can really enjoy this bridge I also wanted to make it a little bit larger because I want it to be the focal point of any battle so this will be a, a focal point just capture the bridge perhaps uh, some kind of scenario with it so there's a lot of opportunities or potential with this bridge itself so there's lots of different things in here we'll see that there we got all this little muck in here that's a actual drywall compound and we're going to talk a little bit about that more in construction it's more going to be important in the painting tutorial so in this week's video we're just going to be doing the crafting of it uh, same as i usually do in most of my videos and uh, hopefully the next week i'll have it uh, the painting tutorial out for you guys um, i'm planning on putting some plant life maybe some flocking a whole bunch of different stuff on here to really uh, take this bridge to the next level all right, so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, guys, let's get down to the table and let's start crafting. Okay, so this is how I started. Uh, I cut uh, two uh, pieces of uh, dollar store foam board out, and I went with the uh, three archway pattern, uh, mainly because I wanted to make a more elongated bridge. And then I cut out all these support beams. And at this point, I wasn't sure if I was going to go with a ledge or I was going to do uh, cross beams to um, support my roadway in the center of the bridge. So I kind of just looked at it and decided that I was going to go with the uh, with the cross beams. Uh, just a note uh, that I glued all this together uh, with a hot glue gun. Uh, and uh, I did leave the paper on my dollar store foam board on those supports. I'm just showing you that I measured uh, it out with my miniatures. And this is pretty well how I measure all my terrain. I use my miniatures to measure it out. That's the brand of uh, dollar store foam board I use, the ready board. Uh, here I get it to Dollar Tree in Canada, uh, but I'm sure it's available elsewhere. All right, so just showing you, I put the cross beams on. And what I want to make a note of on there is I glued them on at an angle. And I'll show you here in a minute. I'm going to put a piece there. Uh, and the reason why I did that is uh, because the roadway is going to be uh, uh, wrapped around that. So you kind of want it to be uh, in an archway. The only board that's straight is the center cross beam. Okay, so then I did these um, bottoms of the bridge. So essentially just took larger pieces of foam board 
uh, bent them around a pickle jar actually to get a curve like that and then use tinfoil ball to texturize it give it a kind of a stucco feel to it uh, and then I uh, just placed it underneath there um, I ended up hot gluing it in uh, and then just using an exacto blade trimmed it up and then I added these foam uh, insulation foam kind of braces underneath the bottom uh, what happened is those curved pieces started bending and bowing at the bottom I didn't put enough support on there so I added that in there well you learn as you go along you make mistakes and you fix them uh, so then I decided to do kind of like a fence pattern on the top. So this will give the extra support uh, for the roadway when it's sitting on top. Uh, and I went ahead and uh, did the entire bridge that way. Just showing you uh, it all completed on the bottom and the uh, supports on the top. So now we'll be uh, ready to uh, make the road itself. All right, so now we're moving to the road. Uh, I just cut a large piece of dollar store foam board out. Uh, I got my trusty uh, dowel, uh, and I uh, just uh, drew it all out. Uh, and, uh, you know, it took me about uh, 30 minutes to do it. Um, there is other methods where you could get, uh, like, a rolling pin, a texturized rolling pin, and do it that way much faster. Uh, but I just sat down, chilled, listened to some music, and, and, and punched this out in about 30 minutes. Uh, I like the randomness of uh, doing it this way. All right, so here's this completed. I got the roadway glued on, uh, and I added these uh, larger pieces to the bottom. Uh, and why I did that is because I want to add a little terrain to the bottom, so some plant life, some mud. Uh, just add a little bit more to the bottom of the bridge. Uh, just try my mini on it, make sure everything uh, fits out nicely, and then they sit on there properly. Uh, and then I moved on to uh, the brickwork. So I uh, used uh, tacky glue for that, so the white glue. And uh, just showing you, I glued these pillars on first uh, before I moved on to the actual individual uh, bricks themselves. So get some uh, insulation uh, foam. I cut these strips out. Uh, and uh, and I essentially just cut them into little uh, little bits uh, with my exacto knife. Now I showed this in other episodes, uh, but uh, here we go. This you know essentially into that. Um, and then what I do after I cut them into smaller bits, I, I put them in uh, into uh, my little present here, and it has uh, rocks in it, so I tumble it in some stones, and that gives you a texturized uh, look to the uh, foam. Now I've already showed this technique also in another video. Uh, I just want to note that I actually did, uh, in this build, switch to a coffee tin, which would allow me to do a lot more of those uh, at, at once. So then I moved on to gluing the bricks on. So there's my big pile of bricks that I made. And I just want to note I barely had enough to finish this bridge. So I actually ended up using all those bricks uh, on this uh, build here. Uh, just uh, looking for the right uh, brick here to show you, but I, I do plan on... Uh, gluing a top a brick on top of each archway and that's kind of like a, a starting point uh, for where you want to do your I kind of uh, wanted to glue the archways and the top of the bridge first uh, and then kind of fill in all the other bricks afterwards so here I'm showing you that I've done the uh, top of the bridge with all the larger stones first uh, and then I move on to uh, doing the archways around uh, the tunnels here the uh, uh, of the bottom of the bridge. So then I propped them up on these paint uh, bottles here, just so I have it on the side when I'm it's just more comfortable to glue them on. And you can see this is how I started my archway to that first brick and then kind of worked my way down. I also uh, made a level of bricks along the whole base of the bridge as well. So I'm kind of outlining essentially all the areas first uh, before I fill in all the other bricks. So this is after I've filled in all of one side. So I've completed one side here. Just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like. And then, of course, I'm going to have to move on to the other side uh, and complete it as well. So this is both sides completed. Uh, all the bricks are put in place. And now I'm going to move into the inner part of the bridge. So, of course, there's a whole open area there where we haven't had any bricks in. So this, of course, is a lot more trickier <laughs> to fit in those tight areas. But uh, essentially, I, uh, all those little bits on the table, that's from all the different bricks that I've cut with an X-Acto blade to fit what I needed. 
Uh, and again, I kind of go random. Um, I go some sideways, some uh, up and down. Uh, do some small bricks, uh, large bricks, and then multiple bricks, bricks of the same kind. I, I just like the randomness uh, stonework on there. I think it looks a lot more uh, authentic in, in what I'm looking for in this uh, design. I did the same uh, technique on the outside of the bridge as well. So I'm just illustrating that here. Uh, how I put that in there. So then I moved on to uh, drywall compound. So this, I've shown this once before in the temple build. I use this, uh, but I use it on most of my terrain pieces. And why I do that is to make the ground uneven. I'm just showing you the water. Water is good for uh, if you want to uh, smooth out your drywall compound. So once you put it on there uh, and you want to smooth it out a little bit more and it's just too dry, you can just add that water to it and it'll smooth it out. Uh, and this stuff, uh, it looks pink and it dries uh, white, so it's great. It, you know when it's completely dry, it'll change color. Uh, and I'm just showing all the different areas. So I plan on using it to fill in the cracks on the bottom here and where it's not quite level on the bottom of the bridge and also to uh, add some texture to uh, the bottom of the bridge. So when we go to the paint tutorial, uh, and I do plan on making this kind of a muddy, boggy kind of feel to the bottom here on the base of the bridge, uh, just add a little more character to it. Um, because uh, I work uh, or play on a lot of my games on a flat surface, um, I originally was going to make this into like a diorama where I added water into it and the whole nine yards. So I was just going to make it uh, kind of like a whole uh, diorama terrain piece. But uh, then I, I opted against that because I felt it wasn't uh, it wasn't able to move it around as much. This way I could add it to islands. I can put it on all sorts of different uh, tabletops that I already have. Uh, and it makes it a lot more transfer transferable uh, kind of uh, terrain um, on different games. So I decided. Well, I still wanted to add a little little plant life and a little uh, little texture to the bottom. So I decided to go this route by adding those little uh, small platforms underneath all of the bridge. Uh, I'm able to add some texture and some uh, plant life, and this will look like kind of like mud, really. On, on the bottom of the bridge. So I'm just showing you where uh, I plan on putting it. I plan on putting it all the way around. And yes, I'm just using my finger. I just find it's just easier just to smear it on with my finger. So I'm going to attempt to try to show you. I'm trying to show you uh, on the bottom where I'm putting it in those cracks. Um, but it's, it's really uh, on the bottom of all the archways. Um, where I added those pieces on, there's a bit of a crack there, so I'm just going to fill it in with that, uh, with that drywall compound. And then I'm just showing you all the different areas, but I, I mentioned already that I'm planning on doing, uh, the entire bottom. Uh, it'll add a lot of, uh, texture to that, uh, to that, uh, bottom of the bridge. So here's the, uh, it's not dry yet, but I'm just showing you kind of where I've smeared it. And, I, and I'm okay if it's gone up the bricks a little bit. Uh, when we do that uh, painting tutorial, those uh, all those textures are going to really add a lot to the character of the bottom of the bridge. And it'll look like mud and and uh, plant life and stuff growing up the the side of the the bridge. Uh, so when this dries, uh, just note that anything that's uh, sticking out too far, or too pointy, uh, you can just sand it off. Uh, that's uh, usually you'll touch it up with a little bit of sandpaper afterwards. Uh, and give it a good uh, uh, clean up uh, and get it the way I like. But uh, I think this will be uh, fantastic when we get to the paint tutorial. Okay, so this is the finished bridge. I'm um, just taking one more look through it. Uh, tried, uh, tried it out with a few minis on it. I got some English pirates uh, attacking this French bridge. Uh, and they're just kind of illustrating uh, how well the mini sit on, on this elongated bridge. So really happy with the way this build uh, turned out. And I can't wait to uh, move on to the paint tutorial and paint this guy up and add that flocking and plant life. So just giving you one more overview of everything. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and uh, hit the like button if uh, you like what we're doing here in the Punter Den. And consider subscribing to the Punter Den and get first-hand information when I work on these kind of projects. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.